Hello, 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 welcome to Firearms of America and as you guys can see today I have another Keen boot review and this is Keen with a strange name, Lancic Utility Boot. Let's get into it. So if you don't have time to watch the whole review, let me give you a brief overview uh, to save you time and at least, you know, give you some sort of important information in a few seconds. They do run small. Get yourself at least half a size bigger than usual. I would even probably go with a full size bigger. Uh, other than that, if you do get them in the right size, great boots, very comfortable, uh, definitely on the heavier side, but they do feature a steel toe. So obviously, you know, you're gonna have that very good toe protection. Uh, but of course, with that comes some sacrifice uh, in the weight department because now the boots are a little bit heavier and it is a little bit harder to walk around for extended periods of time. But if you do have time to watch the whole review, let's get into it. As some of you already know, this review, this boot is specifically for my ultimate survival boots section. Basically, if this was your last boot that you put on, uh, you were at work because this was this is a work boot uh, and something really bad happened. Uh, catastrophe, war, natural disaster, pandemic, I, I don't know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and you had to walk, run to safety for extended periods of time. You had to climb on the way. You had to fight, do all of these different things to survive. Would this be a good boot to survive in? So how do we make the judgment on this channel? We judge by eight different criteria. Let's get into it. Criteria number one, of course, the comfort level. Uh, like I said, these boots overall are comfortable. In order to test the comfort level, I do a three mile run and then a five mile walk in all of the boots that I review on this channel. Yes, I do a lot of running and walking. Uh, yeah, never been a runner, became a runner with this channel. So like I said, <laughs> overall, these boots are comfortable and there are a few factors that contribute to that comfort level. Okay, so let's get this one out of the way because like I said, this is really one of the things about this boot is the weight because you do have a steel toe. So they are on the heavier side, so don't be too scared of the weight. 24.3 and uh, if you watch any of my boot reviews I always say that really anything under 20 ounce is where you start losing that comfort. It becomes harder to walk for extended periods of time and definitely definitely pretty hard to run. So three miles in these boots Ah, uh, believe me guys, it wasn't easy. After about one mile, mile and a half, I was already feeling it. I was getting really, really exhausted because of that extra weight. Usually, typically you want something under 20 ounce. Uh, and whenever you get into those 15, 16 ounce boots, that's when you feel lightweight, almost no restriction in the movement and you can run just like you would be able to run in your regular sneakers. Uh, of course, this, you know, with all the protection that you get, you do sacrifice a little bit of the weight. But there are plus sides to the comfort level and it is, one of them is very, very good inner sole. I really do like it. Uh, it is very nice and jelly. It's sort of that firm jelly, but on the bottom, as you can see, there's also that pattern going, which adds up to the impact uh, resistance. So whenever you're running, you obviously it's harder to run properly in this boot because they are on the heavier side, but because the inner sole is really good, it takes on a lot of impact, you still don't compromise that much of the comfort. Now, whenever you remove the inner sole, there isn't really anything, any other padding that is going on inside. It just goes straight into the hard rubber. Uh, whenever it, goes, it go, comes to the toe box, you do have a little bit of cushioning on the inside from the top. Not enough though. Honestly, I wish Kin implemented a little bit more cushioning because, especially because this is a steel toe, it would have been good. So I do, if you're buying this boots, I do, well, I, it's not even a recommendation. You have to get these boots in the right size with a little bit of extra. Uh, but I do recommend wearing some 
thicker socks so that you do have a little bit of cushioning from socks uh, because you can get fatigued pretty quickly if your toe is you know hitting the front the top of the toe box because it is harder uh, and then of course we do have the outsole itself which contributes to the comfort level of course the flexibility of the outsole and luckily it is fairly flexible so you do have that contributing to the comfort level overall on the comfort i would give this boot if you get them in the right size and you know with some good thicker socks i would probably can give this boot a seven out of ten on the comfort level not that bad but definitely i think there are a few things that kin could have done a little bit differently to make it even better okay so done with the comfort level let's move on to the criteria number two which is proofing and protection uh these boots are waterproof so pretty good you do have gusseted tongue as you can see probably about four four inches um of the ground um you do have obviously you know whenever it comes to the protection you do have your still toe which goes up to here pretty good definitely works definitely nice there isn't really much in the ankles for the protection so keep that in mind and you do have some reinforcement on the heel pretty good now overall as you can see the shape of the boot you do have your heel a little bit higher so it's not really a flat uh, bottom sole boot but we will talk about it a little bit later uh, you do have a decent amount of protection whenever it comes to the bottom sole and as you can see these are actually oil resistant slip resistant which most of the work boots they should be oil resistant slip resistant because that's what you typically get them for you know for those flat surfaces but like i said we'll talk more about the outsole sole a little bit later let's move on to the criteria number three which is the quality and the design features now quality wise these boots they do have very good reviews almost 100 reviews on amazon the link is in the description below if you want to check it out uh and uh, almost five stars so people do like these boots uh now whenever it comes to the um design features usually here i talk about the lacing system i do like the lacing system uh the strings are very good now the lacing system itself as you can see it's regular material hooks which I'm usually not a big fan of but because the strings are very good it's very nice round strings they do glide through these hooks material hooks very easily pretty good and I am also a fan of these uh, heavy duty plastic open hooks on the top it's just one pair but it is very similar to the system that Salomon uses, which locks the string in place. It's the same thing here. You can lock the string in place and it can hold, which is really, really good. Really helpful whenever you're tightening the boot. All right, so let's move on to the criteria number four. Yes, the outsole traction and stability. Now, this outsole is obviously more designed for work situations. As you can see, there isn't really a lot of aggression going on although compared to a lot of other work boots that i have reviewed on this channel this is definitely better uh whenever it comes to aggression most of the times it's really just flat whenever it comes to the work boots but here there is a more or less decent balance now i test all my boots on a variety of different surfaces starting from asphalt going to the tarmac uh dry sand wet sand dry grass wet grass rocky road uh some trail surface and of course some flat surfaces like tile and marble these boots perform very very good on tile and marble as you would think they do perform pretty good on sandy surfaces because there isn't really much aggression and because there isn't really a lot of places as you can see on this outsole for the sand to get stuck in uh, they do perform very well they are a bit slippery on the wet grass obviously because there isn't a lot of aggression and of course if you would test them on an ice or snow they're definitely going to be very slippery so definitely not for ice definitely not for snow although if you are planning them for your winter situations they are waterproof and with some insulated socks i'm pretty sure you can get away with some colder temperatures which is actually the next criterion uh, is the temperature uh, and like i said they are you know you can definitely get away in the colder temperatures with these uh, although they don't have any kind of winter special insulation keep that in mind uh, but in the hot temperatures they are definitely nice and breathable as you can see uh, they do have this fabric on the top which has a lot of pores going in and they do contribute 
to the overall breathability of the boot. Now, let's move on to the criteria number six, which is the sizing. As I have mentioned in the very beginning, they do run small. So keep that in mind, get them at least half a size bigger, but I would recommend going the full size bigger so you have a little bit of that extra space uh, because it's very important in the boot, especially in the work boot with the steel toe. Extremely important so that you have a little bit of that extra space so that whenever you're walking, especially walking down the hill, that's usually when it happens, your toe doesn't bank on the front of the toe box because that will kill your toes. You will just fatigue you really, really quickly. Okay, so let's move on to the criteria number seven, which is the balance of application. Uh, so basically, if this really was your last survival boot you put on and you had to walk, run for extended periods of time, fight, do all of the things that survival situation may demand from you, would this be a good boot? Now, if you prefer more of the protection, if you do prefer your toe to be protected, you're gonna like this boot. Now, I personally prefer for my survival situations more something that does not restrict the mobility that much, so something lighter. I would rather compromise a little bit of protection and get something without the steel toe, uh, something with a soft toe, but, but something that is much lighter, something that I can run in, move faster, you know, do a, you know, climb and do all of these things without that much restriction of the moment. Uh, so really it comes down to the personal preference. Are you more for, you know, faster movement or are you more towards that protection? If you're more towards protection, this might be a really good uh, boot to consider. And overall, if you are considering this boot, you know, not for your survival or anything like that, but just for your regular work, great boot. I have, I mean, Keen, I've reviewed a lot of boots from Keen. In fact, one of them was, uh, a work boot, it was Keen Pittsburgh, absolutely great boot. Uh, the only thing, like I said, make sure you get it in the right size because this is really very important part. If you do get it in the right size, you're gonna love the comfort, you're gonna love the protection. Uh, and the very last criterion, criterion number eight, which is the price. I think definitely a pretty good competitive price, 118 currently on Amazon, but it can change as of me today making the video. So make sure you check and verify that information. The link is in the description below. But I think 118 for everything this boot provides, definitely, definitely a fair price. Uh, there isn't really a lot of competition in that price range, um, but there are a few with the reinforced toe. And like I said, from Keen, check it out, the Pittsburgh, actually I did the review on them and also a pretty good boot, especially if you want something with a taller shaft they do have a taller shaft, so you might be interested in those. So let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think about those boots. Would you consider them for your work? Would you consider them for your survival situation? If you have any reviews, you can drop them in the comments below. I add them all to my to-do list, and if I come around them, I try to do them as the priority. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. This was Firearms of America, and I'll see you guys in the next video.